One Wintry Night, written by Ruth Bell Graham, illustrated by Richard Jesse Watson. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 1-11 Chapter 1 Caught in the Storm The boy hunkered down and yanked his cap further over his ears as the wind rose to a roar across the ridge. Low dark clouds moving down from the north were bringing darkness early. A snowflake touched his cheek. The boy was mountain tough, but his grandpa had warned him against taking a long hike alone on such a cold day. Still, the boy had the urge. He loved the mountains, especially the Seven Sisters. They were home to him. He'd lost track of how many times he had hiked them. His grandpa used to climb with him, only grandpa's heart wasn't up to it now. Another gust of wind caught the boy off balance. Grabbing a tree for support, he lit the old possum lamp against the oncoming darkness. Then in its flickering yellow glow, he noticed the leaves of the laurel were curled up, tight like pencils in the bitter cold. Again, the roar of the wind rose in the bare branches above him. The boy wasn't scared, but for the first time, he wondered if he would make it home. He wasn't only mountain tough, he was mountain smart. He figured he was well past Big Piney now. Then he remembered the cove, the one his great-grandpa had settled. It couldn't be far, on the south side of the ridge between the Big Piney and Stompy Knob. Other folks had bought the property from the Mountain family some time ago. His grandpa used to tell stories of how he had helped build the place for them, fetching rocks from the mountain stream beds, even from old still furnaces for the chimneys and walls. If the boy could make it down there, they'd let him in. Inside the log and frame house, the woman heard the dogs bark. Not a friendly bark, but mean and fierce. She turned on the outside lights, peering through the little window by the front door. They were quiet now, but something was going on out there. The wind sounded like a freight train coming over the ridge, and the snowflakes were blowing sideways instead of falling straight down. Then she saw them, the two big dogs with a boy walking between like he'd known them before. The woman opened the door. I'm Zeb Morris, the boy yelled breathlessly as he ran toward the lighted entrance. My grandpa, he helped build this. But before he could finish the sentence, the boy stumbled. The woman caught him and helped him inside. 